No secret that techs nowadays are unhappy with flat rate pay. A lot of them are complaining they want to go to hourly or salary or any, something like that. And I wholeheartedly agree. I have no issue with salary or I have no issue with flat rate. But it highly depends on the shop, the efficiency of the shop, and a lot of other variables that are out of the technician's control. And I believe that's why a lot of techs are kind of tired of flat rate. If you give flat rate to a good tech that's in a really good shop that's well organized and efficient, flat rate is a awesome way to be paid. But that's not always the case. And so I was browsing YouTube the other day and I found this video from the flat rate master basically talking about flat rate versus hourly pay and his opinions on it. He basically thinks that hourly techs are lazy, they don't produce, not all, but this is his opinion. So I thought it'd be a cool video to basically commentate this and just give my opinions on the things that he says in the video. So let's just get into it. Adam, the flat rate master, and flat rate's not dead, and you're probably the reason why it's not. I know it's for clicks, but let's get into the real topic of this video. Discussions about flat rate, uh, you know, technicians, how they get paid, yada, yada, yada. We all know there's a lot of people out there that hate flat rate. And they push things like hourly and salary. And then they talk about other pay systems that are basically flat rate with a guarantee. Let's talk about the real reason why hourly and salary isn't the norm in auto repair in the United States. It's because you don't do enough work. It's as simple as that. All right, first off, got to say this, in most states for technicians, salary is not a legal pay system. If you provide your own tools, you have to be paid either hourly or flat rate in some form or fashion. Salary's not allowed. During the whole COVID lockdown with work from home, the people that are getting paid hourly and salary were being monitored for the exact reason I'm talking about. Not doing their job when they should be. Now I can name several people, I won't, that I can tell you right now you log into to Facebook and you will see them repeatedly on Facebook during the work day. So right there, how would he know that they are repeatedly on Facebook during the work day if unless he's repeatedly on Facebook during the work day? So there's a double standard there. Since you're hourly, you shouldn't be on Facebook during the work day. But since you're flat rate, you can. Like even if you're hourly or salary, depending on on if you guys both have the same jobs, you guys can both flag the same amount of work no matter if you're flat rate or hourly. You know, just how much work are you actually getting done when you're sitting there on your phone or on the PC answering things on Facebook? Chances are your bosses aren't getting the full amount of work they pay you for. Hence, one of the reasons why flat rate still exists, because they don't get what they should out of you. It's just not true. <laughs> like, it depends on the tech. If you're paying good money for a good tech, they're going to flag the hours. The fact of, you know, waiting the downtime in the shop, you know, maybe you're waiting on parts, maybe you're waiting on approvals for work. It could be a million reasons why a tech is on his phone slacking off. There's a million reasons why a tech isn't flagging hours like he should. If you're flat rate or salary, it doesn't matter. You can flag the work. It has nothing to do with your pay scale. I know there's a whole bunch of people that will be screaming in the comments, yada, yada, yada. And I know there's a lot of people that do. There's a lot more that don't. You know, the meme of boss makes a dollar, I make a dime, I poop on company time. And that is extremely true. In every industry across the world, if they're paid hourly and salary, most business. So he says that it's extremely true that every industry in the world, when they're paid hourly or salary, that they slack off. But if you look at it, plumbers, electricians, linemen, 
HVAC techs. They're all paid hourly. They're not paid piecework. They're not paid per job because there's not a lot of dictation onto what every job can exactly pay. That's why they're paid hourly. And they still get the work done. And plumbing companies, electrician companies, they still make money. So that analogy doesn't work. Businesses can expect about 60% productivity. And that's literally about the percentage of hourly salary technicians producing. That's what they produce. 60% of what they get paid to be there for. Think about that. So a former boss of mine came in and, you know, he, we were sitting there talking and he is, when I worked there, I was flat rate. His current crew, his salary, I didn't get into the whole pay thing, but his guys are happy. He was shocked. So I'm just going to stop him there. So he was just saying that techs that are hourly or salary flag only about 60% of what a tech on flat rate would flag. But then he says that his buddy who has a shop down the road and techs are hourly, they're happy. See, there's a thing. If you can basically pay your techs and charge the customer in order to still be profitable and be on hourly, but then you also have a better shop culture. You have less stress techs. You have an easier going environment as opposed to charging the customer less per hour because you know that you're only going to be paying your techs flat rate. So now the techs are stressed. The culture is worse. I would rather be at a shop where the culture is better. The techs are paid hourly and everyone's happy. On how much my guys average in build hours versus his techs. His techs are there the same amount of time my techs are. And they're nowhere close to what we bill here in our techs. And we send him a lot of business on the stuff that we don't work on anymore. So right there, he leaves out a lot of context. He sends this other shop a lot of business on stuff they don't work on anymore. So why don't they work on it anymore? It's probably because it, it's a pain in the ass to work on, doesn't pay very well, and they found that if they stopped working on it, that they would make more money not working on them. But now he's saying his buddy, who owns the shop where they send all this work, the techs are flagging less hours. And it's probably because the work that they don't want to work on anymore that doesn't make money is what they're taking in and working on. So, again, another flaw in his challenge so he's talking about adding a third tech because because his guys aren't working efficiently enough to produce the amount of work that they're there wow imagine that concept you wanting your employees to produce the amount of work they're there gee i don't know why that can be because the type of work they work on it could be because, you know, the, the, the shop dynamics, it could be a smaller shop. It could be because they do a lot of custom work. There's also a lot of context left out of this. Why flat rate exists, 60% productivity versus 120. Now, of course, happy techs, enjoyable to work at versus no happy techs, not enjoyable to work at. You know, shops vary on how busy they are, their dynamics, part supply, stuff like that, which obviously will impact everybody's productivity. His shop isn't that far from me. He uses the same suppliers we do. <laughs> Guess what? He has the same parts problems we do. So my point is that all these people raging in you know, the comments on Facebook, on videos, I'm sure there'll be a bunch down below. You need to realize that the vast majority of the population, vast majority of the population, not just automotive technicians, don't produce the same amount of work as they're physically at work. You know, look at your spouse, look at your friends that do office jobs. How often are they on Facebook? How often are they watching TikTok? How long is their bathroom breaks? Think about it. 
You know, you want this industry to change in general because you don't agree with, with flat rate. And I love, I love the, uh, the, the, the sentiment that, you know, little side note, I love the, no other industry pays like us. If you're at a dealership, walk up front. The salesmen are 100% commission. That would be flat rate. They're paid with a draw that they have to pay back. So right there where he stated that salesmen are paid 100% commission and paid with a draw they have to pay back isn't true for every dealership, and I think it goes state to state. In Colorado, if you are a salesman at a dealership and you sell no cars, you're legally, you legally have to be paid a, a set pay for the time that you were there. So again, you're getting a base pay, but if you sell enough cars and you make more in commission than you do your base pay, then you get the greater of the two. But salesmen still get guaranteed a paycheck. Techs, when they're on flat rate, don't. At CarMax and those kind of places don't pay, you know, 100% commission. But vast majority of dealerships, their salesmen are 100% commission. I mean, if they don't sell a car, they don't make any money either. Most restaurant people are paid a very small hourly wage and rely on tips. Think about that when you're getting food from a restaurant. Now, trades-wise... He's not wrong are a little differently, but there's a lot of people that are paid on commission. They may have a small hourly fee and then they get most of their income from commission. But they still get a base pay. They still get a guarantee. Guess what? It's what you, you know, you might as well say they're flat rate. They're on commission. Let's talk about hourly with commission. You're basically flat rate with a guarantee. But it changes shop culture, and that's the biggest deal. That's why a lot of shops are going to an hourly plus a bonus incentive because it changes shop culture. The employees are happier. They're, they have less stress. They do better quality work, and it also depends on the technician. It depends on the technician's work ethic, and it depends on the technician's integrity. So, again, he's just throwing opinions out there but he has no actual facts because he's never worked in a, a shop that pays salary or hourly. And he is more partial to flat rate, which is fine. But again, he's just, a lot of this is opinions and it's not actual fact. <laughs> I, I've said over and over again, how you get paid doesn't matter. Then why are you so mad? The, get the money that you want and need and however you can be, get paid, whether it be hourly, hourly with commission, flat rate, whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is your paycheck at the end of the week. But so many people get upset about the concept of flat rate. And it bugs the crap out of me. I've seen hourly techs hack some crap up. Flat rate techs hack some crap up too. It has nothing to do with how they're paid. It has to do with the integrity that those technicians have. I've seen flat rate techs hack some crap up. Just because we're flat rate doesn't mean we're hacks. But just because you're hourly doesn't mean you're lazy. Just because you're hourly really doesn't mean you're not hacks. Some of the worst hacks I've seen have been done by hourly employees. I feel like that's an opinion. Hacks that were hourly employees where? Jiffy Lube, Walmart Service Center, like, need context. Some of the worst workers I have seen have been hourly employees. There's... Bad workers in every type of pay structure. I've seen really shitty techs that are flat rate, and I've seen excellent techs that are flat rate. I've seen really shitty techs that are hourly. I've seen excellent techs that are hourly. Most of your shop foremans and diagnosticians are hourly. So, you know. Most 
and, and I'm going to say this statement and a whole lot of people are going to get really pissed off. Chances are, if you can't hack flat rate, you're not that good of a technician. If you can't hack flat rate, you're not that good of a technician. Sounds counterintuitive, right? You just said that if you're a flat rate, it doesn't mean you're a hack. But you have to hack the clock in order to be a good technician? That's the thing is, you can't judge a tech by how many hours he flags. I can, you know, skim corners on doing tune-ups on cars or valve cover gaskets on cars and produce a lot of hours, but that repair isn't going to be done correctly. Or I can take my time, do it correctly, do less of them, and be paid hourly. It doesn't, it has nothing to do with the pay structure. Now there's obviously caveats to that statement, and I know I'm gonna get quoted on that over and over again, but there's caveats. You have to be in a shop that can actually sustain flat rate. Correct. Which there's lots of shops that can't. Right. Um, you know, you can't be limited by the, you know, for instance, the dealership. If all you're doing is warranty work, yeah, it's hard to make hours when all you're doing is warranty. And that's another reason why manufacturers, dealerships, and shops love flat rate. It's because they can bend what they pay you to fix these cars under manufacturer warranty. They can pay you half of the fee to replace a motor on a car just because it's under warranty. Do you think that's fair to the techs? Now think about if all the techs were hourly, you think the dealerships would let the manufacturers pay them six hours even though it takes them 12 hours to replace an engine no the dealerships would fight back and that's what we need but since everybody is just bending over backwards and taking flat rate pay at the dealership and getting shafted with warranty work it's never going to get fixed that's another thing you have to think of too is how efficiently a shop runs or how much free work you do under flat rate now if they put you on hourly and they're still giving away that free work Who's seeing those losses in profit? It's the shop. Who's going to fix it right away? The shop. When it's hurting your paycheck, the shop doesn't care because it's not hurting their profit. It's not hurting them at the end of the day. It's hurting you. But when you're hourly and you are guaranteed a paycheck and the shop owner starts seeing that the manager is giving away work, doing free diags, who's going to start getting charged for diags more often? Customers. So just, you know, those caveats... But chances are, if you can't make good time doing repairs, in most cases, either the shop's not billing the right. That's the same thing with hourly. Just because you're not flagging more hours than you're working doesn't mean it's your fault. It can be because the service writer has no knowledge of how to work on a car, how to bill properly, or it could be the text fault for not communicating that the car needs extra labor time on top of what book time is for rust or for previous work that the customer tried to do himself and fuck the car up. There'd be a million reasons why you can't flag the rate that the book time says. And it's not because you're just flat rate or hourly that you can't beat the clock. There's all kinds of other reasons why that hurts you. Or you suck. Now I get always get... So... Obviously, if you can't flag more than what you work, you suck. The uh, thing about rust. Well, what about rust? I deal with rust every day. The torch sits in my bay. We just added a welder to our arsenal to deal with rust. Because unfortunately, you Yankees keep moving to Georgia. You know, heck, right here. I extracted a... Uh, Broken stud or broken bolt out of a uh, transfer case today. Most people, when it breaks coming out, they bill for it. That's another issue with flat rate too, right? Is if the tech isn't telling the rider that, hey, these studs on this exhaust manifold are most likely going to break and we're going to need to bill for more time. Now the tech is working on the car, breaks that stud, and has to basically get the rider to call the customer get extra labor time approved if the rider wasn't knowledgeable enough to just add extra labor time just in case that issue happened 
So now that's more lost time on the flat rate side. If your shop doesn't, you're stupid. It's not your fault a bolt broke. It's not your fault it's rusty. Bill for it. And that's another thing too. If you just bill the customer, so if you tell them it's a thousand bucks to replace a manifold and then you break a couple studs and you just bill for it without telling the customer, the customer comes to pick up the car, it's 12, 13, 1400 bucks instead of a thousand. Who do you think is going to be getting shafted? It's going to be probably the shop. I've literally only had one time a customer in Georgia ever complain about us upcharging for rust. And that was a customer that wouldn't believe their car from Florida was rusty. Everybody from the north has had no problem paying extra for us having to extract bolts, etc. It's probably because everybody from the north knows their car's rusty. Maybe the person in Florida bought the car used and had no idea that it was from New York or a rust belt state and didn't even know it was rusty. So if you work in a shop that doesn't bill for uh, broken stuff, well, you're stupid because you work in a crappy shop. No, this was Randy. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master. And again, it always comes down to like the shop that you work in, right? So if the shop is really good, the riders are really good, they're efficient and organized, flat rate is awesome. And you can make a lot of money on flat rate. But in a lot of cases, that's not always what happens, right? You always have riders that miss things or jobs that don't get billed correctly or labor times that are too short or the tech doesn't communicate properly. And at the end of the day, that affects the tech's pay. Also, too, on flat rate, you know, shop riders and management are more enticed to give customers free work at your expense. When you're hourly, the shop thinks twice about giving away free work because then it hurts the shop's profit and not yours. You're not losing time when you're hourly. You're paid to be there. You're going to work on whatever they say. But when you're flat rate, they ask you to diagnose a car for free. That's going to hurt your paycheck an hour, two hours, whatever you can flag in an hour the shop basically are just saving face they're getting a good reputation and they're helping a customer out which is fine but again as a technician you're at the shop to make money and collect a paycheck you're not there to please the customers and build a reputation for the shop you're there to make yourself money you building a reputation for the shop is something that comes when you get paid for your work and because you're getting paid for your work you do quality work that's how you build a good reputation for the shop, not by giving away free work. So I just want to say, Flat Rate Master, if you're watching, I don't have any issue with you. I'm subscribed to your channel. But everybody has their opinions on pay structures nowadays, and I thought, you know, maybe this might help techs understand both sides of the spectrum, a uh, tech that thinks that hourly and salary are better and a tech that thinks flat rate's better. So hope you guys enjoyed.